Cyberpunk modders are truly taking things to the next level when it comes to modding this game. Early on, we had the basic stuff, some of those basic cheap mods allowing you to spawn in things, change your attribute levels, and the console commands that CDPR unfortunately removed in a update. In my most recent video before this one, I talked about how modders are actually starting to fix Cyberpunk 2077, adding in some of those missing features, fixing some of the broken features like perks or in-game weapon mods and armor mods. But now as things have advanced even a bit further, a lot of this being done on the Cyberpunk Tools Discord and thanks to the Cyber Engine Tweaks mod, the modability of this game has been gradually growing and growing as more is discovered about how it all works and how we can mod it. So now we've reached a point where modders are able to actually add in a variety of new features, several of which I'm going to show you in this video. Things like New Game Plus being able to be saved by Trauma Team when you die, and even one of the craziest feats of all functional car chases with police in Cyberpunk 2077, that being one of the most highly requested or just bizarrely missing features. But before that, I want to introduce you to today's video's sponsor, Adventure Ages. Adventure Ages is one of the top new free-to-play mobile games available right now. This coming from the creators of Adventure Capitalist and Adventure Communist. Picture this, your time-traveling agent tasked with repairing the timeline. Along the way, it'll take you to all kinds of different ages, like the Bronze, Medieval, Industrial, Renaissance, and even Atomic Eras. During this, you'll meet and collect all kinds of interesting heroes, ranging from Julius Caesar to even Marilyn Monroe. But Adventure Ages is focused on strategy, with each choice you make having an impact on your overall success. But don't fret, because you will be able to purchase upgrades to get things moving faster, and even complete awesome missions, limited time events, and special operations for huge XP bonuses. But the best part of all is your resources will continue to grow even while offline. This makes Adventure Ages the perfect second screen game, whether you're waiting online, at the doctor's office, or maybe even for an extended visit at the bathroom. So if you're ready to try your hand at becoming the greatest agent of all, I do have a link in the video description where you can get Adventure Ages right now totally for free. And if you love the game like I do, you could even check out their Instagram page where in their latest post, you could enter to win win 1,000 gems. But looking back over at Cyberpunk, one of the first mods I want to highlight for all of you was Respector. This is a pretty powerful mod bringing several new features into Cyberpunk 2077. After downloading it, it'll add in a totally new and functional menu, this having some basic cheaty features, so you can spawn in all kinds of items. It actually has a functional search, so you can quickly and easily search through basically everything available in the game, whether it be weapons, armors, or even some of the cybernetics you could find, or adding all the vehicles to your own character, with a pretty nice aspect of this being that you could actually add packs to your character. For example, spawn yourself a pack of legendary gear that is a bunch of cop items, or alternatively, all of those weapons that go in your weapon room in your apartment, give yourself every vehicle in the game, this being bundles of all kinds of things you may want or need. But where this actually becomes quite a bit more powerful is with your character respecking. It does give you a fully fledged character respecking tool, so you could reset all your perk points or redefine all of your attribute values. You could do this in a non cheaty way, just moving around attribute values from one attribute to another, or have all of them be fully customizable and just max them out. But the pretty cool aspect of this is you could actually save your current character configuration. You could configure what is saved in this, just making it your skills, attributes, or all of your items, unlocked vehicles, and more, but then actually load that save either A, on a totally new save game, giving you an effective new game plus, you get a quick start right at the start of a new save, maybe having a max level character, or just a particular build already equipped, or just some weapons and items to carry over from a past character, or even a bit more fun with Cyberpunk specifically, you could actually use this to change your build with different combat interactions. So set a save that is only only going to apply to your perks and attributes, clear through a level using one build, then perhaps load back to the start of that level, switch your build quickly on the fly, having totally different attributes and perks, clear through it again with something else, and see how much the experience changes. Could be a great way to test different builds quickly and easily on the fly. And of course, really being the closest thing we have to a proper new game plus if you're interested in starting over, and the high modularity making this very usable. If you just want some of your items, or if you just want to have a bit of a higher level, you can configure things that way. Or maybe you just don't feel like going through the
the process of unlocking all the vehicles a second time. One of the weird things about Cyberpunk 2077 is you can't hack everyone. Like for the reason, police are just not able to be hacked with your cyberware. Same thing with regular citizens, which makes a bit more sense, but the police one is bizarre. Well, as you can imagine, hack everyone is going to fix that. It'll make basically all of those miscellaneous NPCs you previously could not hack now be able to be hacked. This being legitimately handy when it comes to fighting and fending off the police. If you go Netrunner build where most of your damage is coming from your cyberware, it is kind of a huge handicap if you ever try and fight off the cops rather than just loading an earlier save or running away. I know I for one have definitely had those moments where I'm clearing through an outpost and accidentally take out a citizen, not realizing he wasn't one of the enemies. All of a sudden, 15 cops spawn behind me. But speaking of police, I'm sure one of the mods many of you were looking out for, we also do have crime prevention system, which is the mod that's going to add in functional car chases into Cyberpunk 2077. Now, unfortunately, despite the fact that these car chases are very much so functional, they still are spawned by a hotkey. There is no system, at least right now, for cops to just get in their cars or just spawn naturally and start chasing you. But after assigning a hotkey with this mod, you actually can now hit a button, have cop cars spawn behind you, and if you drive away, they will chase you and shoot you. Also included with this is a setting to change these to police bikes, so they'll not be chasing you in cars, but rather on motorcycles. Honestly, this is one of those features where it works so well that I don't understand why it's not in the game. Like at the end of the day, as far as I can tell, what this mod is doing is just placing vehicles behind you that have cops in them and are cop cars. It seems like the natural or ingrained AI is taking over from there with the police chasing you, and honestly, it's really fun. You can go really far throughout Night City with these cops staying on your tail. They are surprisingly smart, like even sometimes I would break really quick to try and get them to hit into me and they would break accordingly to not hit me. And after playing this mod, it just makes it all the more confusing it's just not in this game. If you stop next to a cop, they'll get out of the car, start attacking you. It seems like it would be something that intuitively could work. You take down a cop, a couple of new cops roll up in cars and either chase you or get out of their cars and start trying to attack you, rather than the police just spawning next to you. What this mod does though is give me hope, even though right now it is mostly a workaround. We have to use the hotkey to start the car chase. I do imagine in the future this could become more functional and more naturally integrated in the game, considering the hardest part is already there and actually getting the car chase to work. If there's some kind of way that once you become wanted, a bunch of cops cars spawn behind you automatically, that alone would be a massive improvement. But then, something that goes along great with this, that perhaps is one of the single best mods you could download right now for Cyberpunk is the drivable mobility scooter. Okay, so this one's mostly a joke, but I saw this and then I saw the police chase mod and I was like, okay, these two just seem like they would be great in tandem and create some pretty hilarious moments in the game. I, of course, was using some footage of it before, so if you're curious, yes, this is a standalone mod. It'll replace one of the other vehicles in the game with the vehicle scooter model, so you can get your own and call it to you. If you're still actively playing Cyberpunk 2077, a mod that I would say is almost a must-download is Annoy Me No More. It's fairly simple in concept in that what it's going to do is remove several just bizarre things from the game that probably shouldn't have been there or are really frustrating after playing for more than 5 to 10 hours. Take, for example, that cripple effect you get when you get the relic malfunction. You get why it's there, but after playing the game for 50 to 100 hours, you get really tired of it. This mod will remove that. You still get all of the notifications on screen and the audio, but you're no longer going to be crippled. You're not going to have the blurred screen effect, and you could just kind of continue playing naturally. Similarly, it'll remove the whole falling knockdown effect, where basically if you get knocked over, you are held down for several seconds for whatever reason. So now you can continue playing much more naturally. Even further, it'll remove some of the limitations while you're on a phone call. For whatever reason, in Cyberpunk, when you enter into a phone call, it'll lock you out of using some cybernetic enhancements. Can't use double jump, can't use that rocket launcher. Not sure why it's a thing, because some of these phone calls are fairly long and trigger right as you walk into an enemy outpost, so you kind of get into combat, you may want to double jump, and naturally this mod will remove that also. There's a ton of other minor fixes with this one. It's pretty modular, so you can change which ones of these you are using or not. The ones I listed are some of the most handy, and the mod author is playing to add more in the future, which is definitely a positive one for me. I love mods like this,
this and it makes my overall enjoyment a lot higher with a lot of those tedious or annoying things out of the game. From here though, we transition to more the proof of concept in a sense of some of the mods where perhaps you're not necessarily going to download them right now, but they show you a good look at what the future of cyberpunk modding is. Big mods that are just in their early phases and likely to continue to get better and better over time. One of the first ones is death alternative. This will functionally add in a system where you can go to the trauma team headquarters and buy one of the three packages available to you. So when you die, instead of just getting that load screen, we'll be transported to a hotel room. Depending on which package you do buy, it'll cost a certain amount of eddies on death. It'll also restore only a certain amount of health. And basically a couple of days will pass. You could then leave the hotel room and return to wherever you were before. And you'll notice you didn't lose progress. You were saved by trauma team. Now it would be cool to use this on like an ultra hardcore playthrough of the game, wherein after respawning, you lose some items or have some other cost associated with it, not just losing health and losing some eddies. But even at this current stage, it could be a cool way to play the game in an ultra immersive sense. You can make it so if you die, you are done for good until you buy this package or get one of the cheaper ones early on. In a similar vein, a great tandem mod around that is survival mode. Basically what this will do is add in a hunger and thirst meter into Cyberpunk 2077. So periodically you will have to eat or drink. If this drops down, it'll actually start adding on a screen effect to your character. Unfortunately, there's no other debuffs, at least as of right now. It'd be cool to see this get a lot of updates and actually make this be a required feature of the game. Otherwise, you typically just have a ton of food and drink you loot throughout the game and literally never use, or at least I found myself almost never opening that section of my inventory. Even if they just took the fallout approach of making it so you have less stamina, the less food or drink you have, or perhaps your max health goes down a bit if you don't have a maxed hunger bar, could be pretty special. As of right now, it does have that basic functionality, and again, is a nice proof of concept to see where things are headed. Another one that's actually a ton of fun to use in Night City, especially if you're starting a new playthrough, is the Sell Stolen Car mod. It's really simple. It does what the title suggests in that now, if you steal a car, you can take it to Dakota's shop in the Badlands and actually sell it to her. That's fun. You'll get a couple thousand eddies for doing so, but what's even a lot more fun around this is you can actually talk to Dakota. There isn't full on dialogue right now, but it kind of opens up this little prompt after hitting the appropriate hotkey. And after conversing with her, she'll actually give you a mission to go and find a specific car at a specific location. And in exchange, you'll get more eddies as a reward. This is really cool, especially because it doesn't actually give you a quest marker. So it does make it hyper immersive in that you're just making note of what car it is and where you have to go. You'll make your way over there, kind of do the laps, look around for the car. And then once you find it, you can return it for a clean 10,000 eddies. Even just using that dialogue option. I think makes this a pretty fun way to make eddies early on in cyberpunk. Doing relatively easy odd jobs here or there to get 10,000 eddies is pretty cool. Another one that adds in quite a bit of fun stuff to do with cyberpunk is combat mode. Not combat, but combat. In effect, what this mod will do is spawn around you a ton of different enemies from the cyberpunk world. There are a couple of different settings. You could either have a wave system, so after you clear the enemies, more will spawn, but basically a bunch of bosses will spawn around you and you will have a seemingly endless fight just to see how long you could last against them. Of course, if you're playing like me on an easy difficulty, you don't have much of a fight, you could probably survive a very long time or until you literally run out of ammo. But it's one of those modes that's actually pretty cool. I'm doing it in the Badlands, but of course you could do this anywhere, including in the middle of Night City, creating complete chaos if you wanted to. A lot of people do enjoy the combat of Cyberpunk, and this will effectively add in a little horde mini game. And even if you feel like this is cheating, you can configure whether or not you want to get experience from this. If you want to keep things on the tamer side, but I already dumped a good half hour into just messing around in this mode on one of my characters, and I imagine a lot of you would probably enjoy doing something similar. Cyberpunk 2077 mods find themselves in a very interesting state right now. Several of these mods have a ton of potential to give you transformative or vastly improved experience in Cyberpunk. The modding scene is still very young. There's still new discoveries being made basically every single day and new mods coming out in the plenty. Even with these videos, sometimes it's actually hard to keep up with all of the new releases. There's a lot to look forward to, and I'm definitely going to be continue to cover all of these, as well as some of the other ones as they get updated, as modders slowly start to fix the game, and even now, just add atop the game, add incredible features, or even some of those missing ones. As always, again, I thank you all for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this video, but until next time, I hope to see you all later.